Thanks for joining us for this episode. And before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you may listen to podcasts. If you want to learn more about any guest featured in this episode or access any content or resources discussed, be sure to check out the show notes in the episode description. We hope today's episode increases truth and inspires hope in the lives of your church, your business, your family, and beyond. Welcome to the Must Increase Podcast. Welcome to the Must Increase Podcast. I am your host, Luke Clayton, and today I am joined by one of my favorite guests and who is no stranger to the podcast, Mr. Jeremy Lenatine, coming to us live from his car, for those of you watching. Uh, Jeremy, welcome back. Thank you. Yes, I figured I'd try the car recording. Because when you're living in a house full of kids, it's pretty much the only zone of peace and quiet. So Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you sound great. You look great. And you are joining me for an all new type of episode that I've never done before. Now, before I get started, I will say that I kind of stole this idea from the other uh, podcast that I co-host and produce. So shout out to that. That's Church Advance with Brian Sams. Brian, every year does his, since he started his podcast, he does a best books of the year. Um, and so I'm kind of taking that and doing my own spin on it. So for this month, the rest of this month, as we come out to or, or come in rather to the new year and round out 2023, I am going to be doing a best of series. And so today we are starting with uh, best uh, podcasts and books slash audiobooks. And the reason I do it that way is because I'm a big podcast guy. Uh, and any books that I read, I technically don't read, I do listen to. So, um, I, and Jeremy, you're more of a reader. So this will be a good conglomeration of, of best growth materials, maybe is the best way to put it, uh, and resources that we found. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do this in a little bit of a different format. I don't really know what's on your list. You don't know what's on my list. We're going to we're going to handle this as a draft. And so what we've done before off the mic before we started recording, I flipped a coin for who would get first pick. And I actually did win first pick. And I've already pre-selected my number one pick and you're pre-selected your number one pick. So we're going to save number one to the end. But we both know that those are off the table as far as our other picks. So now we'll start with my second pick. We'll go through two, three, four, five. Uh, I'll do two and we'll we'll alternate that way. And then before number one, we will have 30 seconds each to give honorable mentions. So those are the rules. Uh, Jeremy, do you have any questions before we get started? We're going to dive right in here. No questions. I love fantasy football. I'm in three leagues and I'm winning in all three of them. So I love this format and I'm very comfortable with it. I'm just sad that we're not betting money or anything like that to see who has more popular picks, I guess. Well, we'll see where this goes. Maybe in the future years, we'll turn this into uh, just a big a big gaming bet thing. And you would have to bring up fantasy football. I did get knocked out of the playoffs last night. Um, okay. Yeah, so rough rough weekend for Jalen Hurts. But that's not what this is all about. Weird games this whole week. Anyway. Yeah, the Titans beat the Dolphins. What's up with that? But anyways, so – So uh, let's, but let's get in. So I get number two uh, and number two for me is going to be a podcast uh, podcast rather. And it is the net positive podcast hosted by John Christ. So this is something that I stumbled on this year. Now, John Christ, he's, he, he, everybody kind of, you hear that name. He kind of was a up and coming quote unquote Christian comedian. Then he got canceled uh, because yeah, he was, he was kind of up to no good. Um, and he took a, you know, a month or, or no, it was longer than a month. It was like a year of maybe rehab, whatever. And now he's come back. And so maybe he's a controversial character. Um, but I find him to be pretty funny. I like his podcast better. And I like his stand up. His stand up's okay. Uh, but his podcast is, you know, it's just him and a couple guys just kind of, you know, a comedian's take on the weekly news, uh, kind of sort of, and I, I don't know, I've, I've discovered it this year and I really enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, and so that is my number two pick. Uh, and I don't know if you have follow-up thoughts or if you just want to roll right into your number two pick. Uh, but that that's coming at number two for me. You know, I remember you telling me something about his podcast, like a couple months ago, I had forgot that you mentioned it and I've, I've never, ever heard it. So I don't have much to follow up on. 
But I did you know, notice, yeah, that he spent he's, he did his time in rehab, and so now he's making a uh, a more uh, you know clear clear minded comeback and stuff. That's good. That's good stuff. Okay, so then I need to give my number two right now. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's your okay, number right. two. Is uh, you're you're on the board. All right, on the board right now. Start the clock. I'm gonna go with a book, and it's a book that uh, I like it. So okay, so backstory in this book. For those of you that are married, you know how this is. My wife, three years ago, she's like, you got to read this book. It would be so good for our class. We lead a, a couple's class, kind of young couples, anywhere between 25 to 45. Oh, we should go through this book with our class and whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And she pushed me for a year to read this book. I never did. And then she stopped pushing me. And so I was like, okay, now I guess I'll, I'll give it a try. And so the book is called Habits of the Household. And it's, in, it's by Justin Whitmill. Now, Justin Whitmill is uh, an up-and-coming author. I think he had a book previous to this about something about habits and routines. Then he wrote this one, and it put him on the map. He's, uh, he's now wrote uh, written a third book in the last couple of months that he launched. He is a Catholic. Um, and so some of – he talks about kind of the um, – kind of like rituals and things. But his whole premise for the book is in Habits of the Household is habits, routines, and things that we need to do that uh, allow us to worship God as a family. So the concept is great. Uh, and so he goes through 10 different times, whether it's like waking in the morning, you know, uh, meal times, discussions, um, uh, homework, you know, different things like that in segments. And I liked it so much, I immediately turned it into a 10-week a series for our couples and had them all buy the book. There's very little, you know, Catholic reference in there. I just told them up front, you know, here's a couple things, but we went through it and people loved it. It helped a lot of couples in our class and it's a fun read. It's down to earth. And uh, I, I really liked it. So that's my number two pick is Habits of the Household by Justin Early Whitmill is his name. And you can get the book on Amazon. It's like 15 bucks. Highly recommend it for anyone who has a household, uh, especially if you have kids. Okay. Yeah. Well noted. I do have a child. And so I, uh, I will, uh, yeah, looking at that. Now the big question for me, like I always ask you when you give me a book recommendation is, is there an audio book? I, well, I imagine, I mean, I don't even, I don't even check for audio books, but I mean, this book, it got so popular. I mean, it's been everywhere. I can't okay. imagine he doesn't have an audio book. So uh, I'm not sure, although there are some helpful written resources and different things that he has you do because it's very practical. So mm. this one, this might be one where you want to read the actual, the actual book, especially I'll tell you, this, especially his dads. For me, I'm so, all right, what are we going to do today? And routine is horrible for me. And this book really, really um, shows you why routine is important if you're going to worship God as a family. So I, I just can't argue with it, even though I don't, I'm not naturally that way. So. Okay. No, no. Very, very good recommendation. Well, here, I'm going to move this into uh, our third round here. Third, pick number three for me. Okay. And Jeremy, this might throw you for a little bit of a loop because uh, it's very different because it is a book and it's an incredibly, and, you, and I honestly, I can't even believe that I read it, much less that I'm recommending it. It is a classic uh, it is The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. Now, before you think that, oh, divorce, like, no, that's it has nothing to do with, you know, marriage divorce. Uh, it is everything. It, it is a it's C.S. Lewis. So it's allegorical. And honestly, it, it's it's like reading a trippy dream. It really is. Um, it's it's really hard to even explain the the premise of it, but I'll do my best. Basically, the setup is there's he's imagining this this version of an afterlife where it's people on a train and you're meeting different people on a train. And really, um, you're, you're seeing these different perspectives of people kind of as they're making their journey to the afterlife. Now, obviously, again, it's allegorical. Uh, C.S. Lewis, I, I, I he had some pretty solid theology. And so we know that, you know, he obviously is the author of the Chronicles of Narnia and, you know, he's very allegorical in a lot of his writings. And so obviously it's a, it's written in an older style. I did the audio book and the audio book is incredibly interesting and intriguing because the, the, um, obviously C.S. Lewis is, he is not reading it. Sorry to disappoint. Uh, but the, uh, voice artist who reads it, he kind of does different voices and different characters. And so it's actually a really intriguing audio book. Um, but you do have to, 
listen and you do have to and honestly it's something that i'm going to go back and listen to again because it is written in such a high level of of writing style because it's a, a classic um but for me um something that i've been kind of just on a, on a personal note through my kind of personal journey this year i've been really looking to understand as best i can which we never will but what is what is basically the sovereignty of God? And it gives a really good perspective on on that. And so I, I highly recommend it. Um, again, it's very a very high level read uh, in terms of, you know, writing style and all of that. Uh, and it's I will be honest with you. I don't understand all of it. I really don't. Um, but there are it's just one of those books where there were just a couple of big nuggets and takeaways for me that were just really powerful. And so, yeah, that comes in at number three for me is The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. OK, that's a really good pick. So I don't know if you've ever read uh, Mere Christianity or Screwtape Letters. Screwtape Letters is written very much like a fanciful dream. Mm. as Well, I really like those. And uh, my 18 year old, he's read both of them now, really likes them. So I would probably, um, I know what you're, it, it's going to be more high level than the two I just mentioned, but if you recommend it, I probably will throw it on the reading list for 2024 and see if I can't, uh, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon. And again, I know you're more of a physical book guy, but really, again, the audio book is actually really interesting. And I think it is one of those that I might argue is a better audio book. Uh, than it is a a written book because of the way the the voice artist does you know the different voices and characters. So yeah, again, that's my number three. But I'm looking forward to seeing what comes in at number three for you. All right, number three for me. So uh, I kind of went back and forth on this one, but I am going to go. I'm going to go with a podcast for this one. And for me, it's a po podcast that I love because. So I listen to a bunch of podcasts throughout the day. I know you do too. We talk back and forth about this although we have very little crossover with the podcasts that we listen to, um, except for, of course, this podcast, the Muscle Freak podcast, where we both agree. Uh, but we won't put it on the list because we already know, obviously. It's yeah, conflict of interest there. Exactly. So um, this podcast is called um, American History Tellers. And if you like history at all, it, it's done very well. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the guy who does it anyways. Uh, it goes through and each season discusses a different period in history. And so like they'll go through and, and talk about what happened during the Watergate scandal. Or they'll go through what happened with the Salem witch trials. Usually it's about uh, four to six or seven episodes um, that are like 30 minutes each. And it, it provides a lot of insight. It's very well done. And this guy puts out, uh, Lindsey Graham is his name. Uh, not the senator, different Lindsey Graham, puts out a bunch of seasons, but they're all very well done. He has several podcasts himself. He's one of the top guys in this space. But if you like history at all, um, he, he he does a great one. He has another one called History Daily that I'm not putting on this list, but it's like seven minutes uh, or so every day of a different uh, quick event that happened in history. So well done, very well produced. And I think that if you like history, you should give it a listen. Yeah, um, I do enjoy history and I have from time to time dabbled in a few history podcasts. And so I'm definitely going to take note of that one. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, because and, and actually, I know you said it wasn't on the list, but the daily one, that kind of interests me because it's a short little bite every day. So uh, maybe maybe I'll look into uh, one or both of those. Um, OK, yeah, well, let's move into round four here. Um, and now we're, we're kind of getting down again. Remember, we're saving number one pick for last in terms of mentioning it. Um, so we're now we're, we're kind of getting down to where it's actually really difficult for me to start to pick. And so um, I, I, I'm, I'm just debating. Uh, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with the John Deloney show. Um, that is the podcast from Dr. John Deloney, uh, who is a. Uh, Dave Ram, he works for Dave Ramsey. So he'd be considered yep. a Ramsey uh, personality um, is what they call him. Um, so John Deloney is a mental health uh, expert. He's a actual doctor and psychology. So a psychologist um, and he has worked in the, the field of psychology, done some pretty, pretty far out things in that world uh, worked in, you know, in on the university level as a, a, I believe a, a president or at least some type of executive in that uh, capacity. Uh, but now he is just, he has this, and it's a caller driven show. 
So people are calling in with their issues having to do with relationships and, you know, just kind of mental health struggles and so forth. And um, it's just really good. You know, something that um, I, I have learned over the years is that, hey, mental health is a real thing. Emotional health, it's all a real part of the human uh, of the human experience, if you will. And so it's something that I've learned to take seriously. Uh, and so this now I will warn you, sometimes it can be a little heavy in terms of the content that they're covering. Um, but uh, it, it is just very excellent to hear, you know, hey, people with real struggles. Uh, and then he's able to give uh, very practical, applicable take uh, 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 advice that you can take away and even apply to maybe situations that you're in similarly. And I'll be honest with you, it's kind of nice to hear that like, okay, sometimes we think we have it bad and there's always someone out there who's got it worse, if I'm honest. Uh, so yeah, that's going to come in uh, at what number four for me is going to be the Dr. John Deloney show uh, podcast. So I'm glad you brought him up. I've never listened to that podcast. However, I do listen to the Ramsey call of the day. Yes. Just about it's the call of the day, but they put out like five of them a day. It seems like every three or four hours they put out a new one. Right. So it's like, the calls of, them, yeah. of it should be called the calls of the day. Yeah. But uh, so I'm familiar with John Deloney from there. And I'll tell you what I do like because uh, people are calling into a financial show, but he understands that most problems are relationship problems mm. at the core right whether it's a relationship with god or relationship with other people so a couple of tricks that he not tricks but a couple of things that he does i find myself doing when i'm counseling with people that i really appreciate when someone's all worked up i always do what he does so i say okay can we just stop and take a moment you know and just say mm. you know and he kind of establishes some things you know he said look yep. you will you know you're courageous for coming in you know or for admitting that you need help here or you know, can we just say that you're really overwhelmed right now? And he allows people to kind of take a breath and then it takes the panic and the, so that's a really good thing for someone to do. If you counsel people from time to time is just stop and establish an emotional baseline when people are just drowning in emotions. So mm. I imagine that's a great show and that's a really good recommendation, Luke. Yeah. Well, thank you. And again, I, I do highly recommend it. And, um, you know, for anybody out there who's, you know, uh, maybe, you know, hey, 2023, maybe it was a great year for you, but maybe it was a hard for, year for you. You know, um, this would be a great way to maybe just get your mind in the mindset of, hey, I'm going to prior prioritize rather my mental and emotional health. And um, it just kind of gets you in that mindset there. But uh, now, Jeremy, let's move on to your uh, your fourth pick here. All right. My number four. So uh, this would kind of be if I could just make number four, I won't do this because you said it needs to be one particular one. But if it could be just anything written by Malcolm Gladwell, I would say that. But the book I read just last month by him is called Blink. And mm. Malcolm Gladwell is, he for me, he's kind of on the other side of the political aisle, but he has a great, fair, and balanced approach. He has written for the New Yorker, and then I think also the New York Times, and he's kind of like a long-form article writer. But mm. he does a great job just unpacking the human experience. So he has books, um, David and Goliath, he has that I read, uh, talks about, you know, why underdogs can win more times than we think. And it starts with the biblical account of David and Goliath is really neat. Um, he has one called Outliers uh, that talks about, uh, you know, um, outliers, essentially. Um, he has this one, Blink, and um, he has a couple other ones, what the dog saw, different things like that. Mm. Anything written by him is really good. I just ordered a book this morning uh, by him that's called uh, The Bomber Mafia. It's the only one that he wrote in that uh, type of historical uh, genre. But he's a great writer. And if you enjoy um, any type of, I don't know, human psychology type of stuff, he's a really interesting read. And I would recommend him as well. All of his stuff is also on audiobooks. Uh, that's Malcolm Gladwell. And um, the book I'm talking about is called Blink, and it's just why we make quick decisions and how we should trust our intuition and those kind of, you know, knee jerk decisions. We should give them a little bit more credit than uh, we sometimes do. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, I think anybody out there is going to be familiar with that name. Um, I know that I've never read any of his books, but I have heard him a handful of times on different as guests on a podcast. And yeah, he's clearly a, a great thinker. 
Um, and uh, like you said, yes, he, we were probably many in our audience are going to defer from him on, you know, maybe philosophy in terms of politics, ideology and whatnot, but doesn't, doesn't discredit any of his work um, and what he does there. So yeah, that's um, I, I got to get into some of his books because you and then others have recommended uh, his books before. So um, maybe I'll put that on my list for 2024. All right, we're coming into the final, well, not the final pick. So this is pick number five. And again, we're about to get to pick number five. one for each of us, but I do have to pick my last one here. And it's tough, and I'll be honest with you, I was undecided until this very moment, but I think I'm going to go with it. And, and honestly, I think your pick there with that Malcolm Gladwell book is influencing it because I'm kind of thinking great thinkers, great influencers, people that maybe we don't 100% align with, but at the same time are just brilliant. And I'm kind of going with the, I guess I'm keeping the mental health uh, psychologist thing going here. And it's nothing original. It's not, it's nothing crazy. It's got to be one of the most popular podcasts out there, but it's uh, Jordan Peterson's podcast. Um, it's, it's a good one. And I think you may be the one who recommended the podcast to me in particular. Um, yeah. I'm, I've read, uh, I've read, you know, 12 rules for life and I've been connected to some of his other content. Um, and, but, uh, Jordan Peterson's just one of those guys, like anytime he talks, you are just kind of uh, drawn in. Um, he's got that way of speaking and that whole Canadian accent thing going on, but also just the way he talks. Um, he's clearly brilliant. And um, I always say Jordan Peterson seems to me to be a Christian who doesn't realize he's one yet uh, because he's always uh, somehow figuring out how to make beautiful application of scripture. Um, he's done full Bible studies on like the book of Exodus, among others. Um, and, uh, but again, he's just a, he's a mental health, uh, he's a psychologist. Um, and even though I think he still claims a level of liberalism, he's a very conservative thinker at the same time. Um, and the interviews that he has, there's something about the way he interviews on his show that is, uh, just so engaging. He asks the perfect questions, but he also elaborates, um, and gives great counterpoints, uh, and, and, and kind of is able to delve deeper into the subject matter of his guests. And so, yeah, that's, that's going to be number five for me is going to be Jordan Peterson. Yeah, that's a really good one. He's sort of like that, um, kind of that Joe Rogan quality of just a really good interviewer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, his, um, what's the name of his different ones, uh, for like manhood, um, Tw uh, 12 rules for life or no, the, on the, on the, um, on the oh, podcast the, and the app that yeah monsters um, dragons Jack, and men or something like yeah, that yeah yes, yeah that, i've listened on, to that that's a good one it's a good one his series on um marriage i forget what, exactly what it's called now it's so good and mm -hmm. like you said all of his he could take a bible story and just explain it on a psychological level that it does not take away from the truth just explains it in a way yeah he's phenomenal you're, yeah. you're absolutely right about that in a way when he speaks on the bible um he truly takes takes it from a purely objective standpoint, and I mean, you know, because that's the thing about you know, if you're if you've grown up in any sort of Christian environment, like you you tend to read in your own preconceived notions into Scripture. Well, he he doesn't have any of that. So truly, what he pulls and the application he pulls of of like biblical accounts and and Scripture is just it's really just well, that's just exactly what it says, you know. And so it's almost a refreshing perspective. So. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my number five. But Jeremy, it's time for your number five uh, here on your on our draft. Okay, all right. On number five. Uh, okay, all right. Number five. I am going to go with. I'm going to go with a podcast, and I don't want to. Uh, I don't really want to go back to. So I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, but I'm not going to put them on here because uh, there's no value in that to people. So what I am going to put on here, again, if you like uh, history, um, is one called um, American Scandal. It's by the same um, guy, but he takes you know people who defrauded uh, or um, kind of had some element of criminality in American politics, in an American history, and um, reads into that same type of format as American History Teller. So I want to expand long on that. But if you like one, you're going to like the other from him. And again, Lindsey Graham is such a talented, uh, well-researched, well-spoken host of these ones. I just, there's like six or seven he does that I could recommend um, all of them. 
but I'll just leave it at those two. Uh, yeah, I, I'll make that my number five. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, I, clearly this must be some great content for it to get two slots on your top five. So, you know, um, yeah, maybe so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to have to check out at least one of these that you're uh, recommending here. So, okay. Well, now before we get to number one, we each get 30 seconds, truly 30 seconds okay. to give honorable mentions. I've got a timer right here and I'm going to start it. And when we hear it go off, I have to stop. So here we go. I'm about to start my timer uh, and I am going to give my honorable mentions. Here we go. Okay. So entree leadership by Dave Ramsey. That's definitely going to make the list. Um, I like this because they changed the format a few um, a few uh, uh, weeks ago to be caller driven. So I really like that. Then I'm going to go with uh, Morning Wire from the Daily Wire. Just a great way to get your daily news. Um, they have a they actually have a morning show and an afternoon show. It's 10 minutes or less in most cases. Nate Land podcast with Nate Bargatze. Uh, that would have been higher on the list for me, but uh, John Chris kind of took that comedy slot. So, but Nate Land is also really good. Uh, another book, uh, Disobedient God by Albert Tate. I don't agree with everything about it, but it's another amazing perspective on the sovereignty of God. I listened to that. Oh, there we go. I'm out of time. That went quick. That went quick. That was good. But, that was uh, a good list right there. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Hold up. Oh, I got to stop it. This is annoying. Sorry, listening audience out there. There we go. Sorry for all that annoying noise there. But anyways, Jeremy, you still with me? I didn't, still here. I didn't mess anything up. Okay. Good deal. All right. So. Uh, those were my honorable mentions. I didn't even get around to some of the ones I wanted to say, but that is just the way it goes. So, Jeremy, you have the same 30 seconds that I had uh, starting now. Okay, I'm going to start with if you like working or running, uh, working out or running, two of them. Um, Choosing it to Run by Des Linden. She won the Boston Marathon in 2018 at like 36 years old. Great book to motivate you if you're trying to get into running. Also, the 80 20 running. Uh, principle is another good one for those that are trying to work out and stuff. Um, one uh, called uh, Switch by Chip Heath. He does them with his brother, and uh, they have several books. They're all really, really good. Again, on psychology, building relationships with people. Uh, oh, that thirty seconds is so fast. I know it goes it goes quick, but you know it is our rules that we made for it's, ourselves twenty minutes it's ago. It's the rules we must abide. Okay, all right. We must abide by the rules that we are making up on the spot. Okay. So uh, here we go uh, to number one pick for each of us, and we do get uh, in theory all the time in the world we want to expound on it. But number one for me is is not going to be a shocker. It's not going to be a shocker to you, and I don't know. It's probably not going to be a shocker to a lot in our listening audience. Uh, because I would imagine a lot of them are already on this train and it's not new. It's been out there for five or six years, uh, yep. but it is none other than the Craig Groeschel leadership podcast. He said this, it. this for me has been one of the single greatest podcasts for me to listen to over the years. Now he only releases a guarantee of one episode a month, the first Thursday of every month without fail, he's going to release new content. Now he has gotten to in the past maybe a couple of years, a lot of times he's releasing a second one as a bonus episode. Uh, so uh, on average, we are, we are getting to where we have about two a month. And usually uh, it's a combination of great interviews with great leaders, uh, but also his solo episodes where he just takes 20 to 25 minutes to teach a leadership concept for me is absolute gold. Now, I, I'm not going to be the, a claim. Like I said, I'm not going to claim to be the most avid reader out there. But in terms of the leadership content that I have consumed from podcasts to books to you know other, other resources, I think Craig Groeschel's leadership podcast is the absolute gold standard because he takes these, these amazing practical leadership concepts and he, and he makes them understandable and he condenses it into, like I said, that 20, 25 minutes. I find myself re-listening to his episodes very often. Uh, and of course, looking forward to his new content. Craig Rochelle's leadership podcast is one of the only podcasts that I do not listen to on three times speed. I slow him down to one and a half uh, because I want to, ca to catch every nugget that uh, that he has there. And yes, that's a little nerdy thing about me. I listen to my podcast on an incredibly fast speed because yes, I'm weirder like that. Um, so yeah, that's number one for me, Jeremy. Um, 
and uh, any follow up thoughts, and then moving into your number one. Yeah, I, I was not going to pick that as number one because I would have put a hundred dollars on the fact that was going to be your number one. And yeah. so I, I'm actually really glad that he only releases t- typically one a month because um, you really sometimes I'll even look at the episode and think like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to like this one. There won't be anything in there for me, and there always is. There's mm-hmm. always something good in there. Mm-hmm. And listening to it with your church staff if you work on it or any type of leadership team that you have and then, you know, diving in, talking about it, you know, making it a teaching time is a great idea. I know a lot of churches in our area that do that. Some of them even get together with other churches to do that. And um, it, it really is. It, they're great, man. You can't say anything else about it. So, and I will say his, his, the, what he teaches is so transferable from church to the business world. Um, It's just great leadership principles. So yeah. All right, Jeremy. You're number one. Okay. I'm really excited. Right. What, what, what do we got here? You know, I've gone back and forth between two different ones. Um, okay. I'm going to make mine a little more broad than I, I was going to put on here. One that's particularly just for uh, like church planning and church planners, because that's the stage that we're in right now, but that won't be broadly applicable. So I'm going to switch and do instead one called, this is for church leaders um, called leveling the church. And it's by Micah Fries. I was sitting in a um, in a church uh, training seminar two years ago, and the guy said, you know, it was talking about organizing your staff for big days and for maximum productivity. Being productive and structured is not something that comes naturally to me. And so, when he said that, he said, "This is the best book that you're going to read on it. You so you need to get it." So I did and read it last year or or earlier this year, we led our staff through it and it really is good. It basically teaches you how to um, break down jobs and get more volunteers on board, spread out the work of the Lord. And so you're leveling the responsibility to other people in the church. So it's called leveling the church by Micah Fries. I think if you work in church work at all, it's definitely a, uh, a must read because it'll help you just be a better leader and hopefully more effective um, in your leadership as you give away and empower people to uh, make contributions uh, in whatever ministry you're leading. So that's my recommendation at number one. Number one, number one. Well, yeah, that sounds, and and there is so much of our audience out there that are pastors and church leaders, and I'm sure they're going to appreciate that recommendation there. Um, Well, Jeremy, this has been a great, uh, this is the first time I've ever done this, and I've really enjoyed this, you know, just kind of going through draft style here, um, you know what, here's what we're going to do. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go crazy again. Like I said, we're making up rules on the spot. Let's, let's do another, let's do another, uh, let's do another little lightning round. Let's give you another 30 seconds, me another 30 seconds, and then we're going to sign off. Um, if, uh, if you, Hey, if you're out there listening and you don't like that, we broke our rules. Okay. In the episode now, I don't care. Uh, but Jeremy, here you go. 30 more seconds to give some final shout outs starting now. Okay, since I teased it, the one, if you're a church planner, it's called Launch by Nelson Searcy. It literally handles everything all the way. It's so good. Two more that I'm going to give you, uh, The Effective Bible Teacher by Josh Hunt. It's a small one, and you should give it to any um, one who teaches the Bible in your church. Um, And then uh, the last one I'll do um, is a podcast called Culpable. And if you like true crime, it's pretty good. And those are the three that I wanted to get in. Oh, wow. Wow. Good job. Like you, we didn't even have to, uh, under, well, there it is. Under there time. Is. Yeah. Under time. Like you, I mean, literally that was, that's perfect. Like you should go on professional debates. Like, you know, you, you, know, would, you would do well. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm annoyed that you cut us off at 30 seconds before. Cause if you watch these presidential debates, no one stops when they're supposed that's to. True. N- that's never, true. That's true. Okay. So. Well, let's All see right, if I can got? follow my rules and give myself my final 30 seconds here. Um, okay. So I, I, my, my time starting, I'm going to just recommend very broadly sermons. I listen to a bunch of sermons, uh, by a bunch of pastors, Craig Rochelle. I still listen to his weekly sermon. I think it's, it's great. It's always really practical. Um, this is another controversial figure, but you know what? I'm going to throw it out there. Jeremy knows this. Mark Driscoll's a fantastic Bible teacher. Yeah. They tried to cancel him. Yes. I will say, I do not agree with everything about him and his, you know, leadership style, but I'm going to recommend those two. I'm out of time though. So that's all I get for final honorable mentions wow you they tried to they tried to cancel them but you will not let them i i went there 
I went there. Yeah, I went public there, with it. Yeah. There you yeah. go. There you go. That's um, no, he, he definitely, he definitely is. I, I wouldn't agree with everything like what you just said, but he definitely is strong in what he knows mm-hmm. and what he, and what he believes and teaches. So that's, that's true. So yeah, good there, there's something respectable about it. Yeah. We're going to have to do this every year, Luke. This is great. <sighs> We, we are. And, you know, this is this is just is just depending on how popular this format is, you know, seriously, audience out there, let us know what you think about this, because I don't know who says we have to wait to the end of the year to do another one of these. You know, there's all kinds of sure. best of top lists that we could make. Um, you know, we uh, so anyways, yeah, it's been good. Uh, and Jeremy, thanks so much for joining me again for uh, this episode and to all of our listeners out there. Uh, by the time this releases, we're getting really close to Christmas. So I hope you're, hope you're having a Merry Christmas season uh, and uh, join us next week uh, as we continue this best of series. Thanks again, Jeremy. And we'll see you later. Absolutely. Thanks, Luke. We are so glad you joined us for this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and wherever you may listen to podcasts. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star review and share this podcast with your friends. You can connect with us online at mustincrease.com. And if you'd like a topic or question to be featured on a future episode, send us a text to 615 915- Nine zero zero four four six one. Thanks again for joining us for this episode, and we look forward to seeing you next time as we continue to increase truth and inspire hope in the lives of others right here on the Must Increase Podcast.